Growing up, creativity was a huge part of my childhood. And for a lot of you, I imagine it was as well. I mean, how many of us grew up drawing endlessly in a sketch pad or learning how to play a new instrument? Though for some reason, along the way, we lose that aspect of our personality. We get the idea in our head that we aren't creative. We all begin as artists, as creative people, but somehow there's this disconnect. Somehow we believe that we've lost our creative side forever. Though, today, I'm going to prove to you that that's not the case. So a little about me. When I was younger, I was constantly drawing over everything, whether it was made-up superheroes, faraway space aliens, random designs and shapes. It didn't matter. I would draw anything over anything, which started to become a problem when I started drawing over my schoolwork, especially when some of my teachers happened to resemble some of the aliens I was drawing. <laughs> so this went on for some time until I discovered the squiggle test. And if you don't know what the squiggle test is, it's basically an exam where you're given a shape, a line, two shapes, two lines, and you're supposed to transform that drawing into something else. But the catch is that your transformation has to be original. It has to be creative. And so, to kind of see how creative you guys are, I brought a few examples. So this one, we have two dots, big dot, little dot. Now what can we turn these dots into? Maybe the earth and the moon, two eyeballs, as my roommate said, a basketball and a slightly smaller basketball? <laughs> well, this is what I turned it into, a plate of fruit. You got your oranges, your apples, your bananas, grapes. It's the best fruit ever made. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. <laughs> and you have strawberries. OK? So now that you've got the hang of it, we got the second example, a little harder. Now keep in mind that with the squiggle test, you can turn the paper however you want to. You can maybe turn it to the right and make it into an ocean, or maybe turn it upside down and make it some crazy hairdo. But what did I do? Breakfast. My favorite breakfast. A stack of pancakes and a delicious hot cup of coffee. So what the squiggle test did for me, other than prove that food is one of the only things I think about, <laughs> is it offered me an opportunity to refine my artistic skills, to actually create something instead of just drawing. And that's the first lesson I want to bring to you guys today, is that creativity is more than just artistic skill. If you could draw that coffee cup, well, congratulations, you're an artist. But if you could design a better coffee cup, well, then congratulations, you're creative. So moving on, a few years later, now I'm in high school. And yes, if you're wondering, I did go to middle school, but I will be skipping over it. It was a horrible time for not to talk about it. <laughs> and eventually, I get to this leadership class which for a large majority of the school, they thought it was, they saw it as an easy A. They thought as because we didn't have tests or we never got homework exams. But what most people didn't realize about the course was that leadership didn't have the regular characteristics of a normal classroom because it wasn't one. It was an opportunity to express your ideas and creativity. Because for our school, one of the largest events we do was providing underprivileged children in our community the opportunity to shop for Christmas presents. And as you know, these presents aren't free. And so every year, it would cause a massive fundraising effort to happen at the school. And a lot of this fundraising was done through leadership, because we were the only club that could constantly come up with new, fresh ideas to raise money. One of those ideas was Trunk or Treat, which we did last year where students paid to have their colorfully decorated cars set up in a maze in the parking lot to allow for their families to trick-or-treat in a safe environment. Another one, one of my favorites, was teacher-student volleyball, in which students and teachers paid to play volleyball against another for that championship trophy. I mean, what could be more satisfying than getting that math teacher back for that excruciatingly hard midterm than spiking them in the face with a volleyball? <laughs> Now, both of these projects raised hundreds of dollars, and they were original. They were creative ideas. And that kind of brings me to my first, to my second point, excuse me, that when you put children, when you put students, when you put adults, professionals, in an environment where they can express their creativity, and they're not bogged down by tests and exams and standardized this and all that stuff, creative ideas will happen. Creativity does happen. Which brings us to today, right now. What can I do, and what can you all do, 
to further improve your creativity. Well, if you've been paying attention, it'll take more than just drawing and playing volleyball to get our creative sides back. But what I found through my own life was that creativity wasn't always just what you could see on a piece of paper. You didn't need a pen or a pencil to be creative. Creativity in my life was just unconventional problem solving. Whether it was being able to turn in my assignments free of my doodles and still maintain my artistic side, or whether it was fundraising money for one of my school's largest events year after year after year. And besides, hitting my math teacher with a volleyball? Talk about problem solving. <laughs> so for those of you who still doubt that creativity has any importance in the real world, for those of you who say that it's not practical, when you think about it, in the real world, what could be more practical than original ideas solving problems? Thank you.